Hello everybody and welcome to Huntsville Huddle. I'm your host Dalton Meyer and the guest this week it's pretty special to me because it's my coach, uh, head football coach, Coach Keeler. How are you doing today? Dalton, great man. Great to be with you. So the first question, before we kind of get into everything, we've had a, a crazy last couple of years, last couple of months of playing, but the big question is, and I've heard a lot through Dirt Sheets and through everybody, is you've been coaching for a long time. You've been doing it. You've kind of done everything you've wanted to do, and a lot of people think, you know, when's this next year going to be the last year? So if my question to you to start everything off is, what keeps you, what keeps you here? What keeps I, you coaching? I, I look that old. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Well, you know, I, I love the challenge. And, you know, moving to Conference USA, I wasn't sure if that was the right move for us. Now I know 100% it was the right move, and it was the right move for me. I love the problem solve. I mean, to me, being a head football coach is problem solving in real time. And if it's with players, if it's with coaches, if it's on game day, well, now I'm problem solving how, in, how to move us into Conference USA. And it's been awesome. Uh, you know, we lost a bunch of coaches. And so now putting together a coaching staff is sort of a jigsaw puzzle. So I've sort of, sort of been doing that. And we lost a lot of great players. I think we lost 11 All-Americans. And so now you're trying to fill the void with some young players, but with some older guys who have some experience. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love what I do. Uh, it's great being here at Sam Houston, a, a place that, you know, they, they want to win. You know, if you think about the last 11 years, there's only five teams in the country that won more ball games than us. And a lot of that has to do not only with the great players we have and also the great coaching staffs that we put together, but also about the administration. They know that this is the front porch. They want to be successful. So it's great being in a place that, you know, they want to win championships. So going into the spring, uh, we, we had a weird spring COVID season. Uh, you've made it to the national championship. You've made it to the playoffs plenty of years. But for some reason, the, the question was you could never get it done, whether it was just strength, whether it was just not being able to score points. So you kind of had this mindset where you want to go all in. You want to bring in guys so you know you could compete on that level. So talk to me about that going into the next year, what you did, what pieces of the puzzle you brought in to finally get yourself a national championship team. Yeah, we, we, have, we were having tremendous success, but I kind of see success as trying to win a national championship. And losing to James Madison and losing to North Dakota State late in the playoffs and getting handled you know, pretty well is like, okay, physically we're not where we need to be. And so that was us going out and getting a full-time football and strength coach. That was us going out and getting a, a, full, a football a dietitian. And, and so um, the great thing about my athletic director, Bobby Williams, is if I give him a problem and I give him some solutions for that problem, you know, he comes through. And so I got an alum to, to cough in $50,000 to help the movement from uh, a part-time, you know, strength coach that was doing, a full-time strength coach but was also doing other sports, to now just a, a football only. And then I reached out to, to two alums and my wife, and between the three of them, they paid for our dietitian for two years until the school took that over. So, you know, again, problem solving. What do we need to do to, to go win a national championship? Also thought we had to make some changes offensively. I thought we had, to, you know, we were scoring a lot of points, we were playing fast, and everyone loves to score points. But when we got in those big games, those guys were as good as we were. And playing fast wasn't the answer. It was some different scheme. It was some different personnel groups. And so that's why I brought in Ryan Cardi and said, I don't want you to do what we've been doing. I want you to, you know, use some different personnel groups, use some different tempos. Um, and, you know, it, we took a step back for a year or so, but when we caught fire, we caught fire. Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy to see the differences with Coach Parker and Coach Zana, the dietitian and strength coach, just uh, the, the energy they brought in. And, and like you said, with Coach Cardi, just uh, the kind of style of offense we ran, you can really tell it was clicking. So we go to fall 2020, 2021, and you think we're about to play a full season. We're getting ready for fall ball, and all of a sudden it's cut short with COVID. And so we moved to the spring. How was that for you being the head coach, having to make those adjustments uh, with not only COVID, but we had a snowstorm, we didn't have a field house, and uh, everyone's heard the stories of how crazy it was. And being a player, having to experience that, having to bring my pads from home yeah. in the car, it was crazy. But as a head coach, how was it? I know there's probably a lot of pressure behind it. Well, and that silhouette of you walking to practice every day is, <laughs> is on our, our rings. I mean, that was one of the things that we wanted to do. We wanted to tell a story with that national championship ring. And I, I mean, every day when I pulled up uh, for practice and I saw the guys with their helmets and shoulder pads walking uh, from their apartments and from the dorms, it was like midget football all over again. <laughs> but we, we took a, a, a really unique uh, viewpoint. It's like every obstacle is an opportunity. And I think the snowstorm was an opportunity for us to all come together and dig that, that field out. Uh, I think losing some coaches just prior to the start of the season was also an opportunity. So 
everything that happened to us, I think we just kept on building on. And the great story is, and I didn't realize this until after we won the national championship, is when we're in the, the locker room after five uh, lightning delays in that national championship game, the whole team was talking about, here's just another obstacle. Like, like this is destiny. We're going to win the national championship because, you know what, this is just another obstacle in our way. And I don't think there's a single soul that went out in that field that was on our sideline that thought we were going to lose that ball game. Even after they scored in one of the historic runs I've ever seen in the history of, of football. <laughs> and if, if they win that game, that goes down as one of the great wins ever in the history of college football. Um, instead, we come back in a six-minute period, drive down the field, convert two fourth downs and a third and nine. We thread the needle to win a national championship. And uh, again, if you were on our sideline, you would have never thought that uh, it was do or die. We just knew we were going to get it done. Yeah, funny story from uh, the National Championship game. You've told it before. Is we were all in the locker room at half, our little halftime, the rain delays, and uh, we all started dancing. We started yeah. music, started playing. We were all in the middle, kind of going crazy because we knew that we were ready to go back out there and uh, get the win. So in that season, at what point did you know that you had the team to win this year? I know we kind of went on a, a really good run of games, and, and it felt really good, but was there a point in that yeah. season where you just knew? I knew opening day. I knew. I walked in that locker room, and it was a late February game. It was just a hot, humid day, and the air conditioning breaks. <laughs> and I walk in, and I see all of our guys, and they're sweating as they're putting their pads on. And no one says a word. The guys just wanted to play. I mean, this season was almost taken away from us. And so because all, all you were concerned about just playing that game, no one said a word because let's just go play. And I knew right there it was special because 18 through 22 year olds having to do their laundry every single day, having to walk up, at the, up and down the, the steps of the, for, of the visitor, visitor side to get in and out of the locker room. Um, you know, it's just all those things we went through, COVID, it just, it just was a sign in my mind that you guys just wanted to play and whatever's gonna take you, we're gonna get it done. And then we go out and play a great game against you know, Southeast Louisiana. We gotta get a stop. We get that stop. We gotta get a first down. We get that first down. So the offense performed when they had to, the defense performed when they had to. I thought it gave us a lot of confidence. I thought moving forward, we could go win a national championship. Yeah, and too, with the SELA game, we were playing probably one of the best quarterbacks yep. in FCS, Cole Kelly, just uh, it's thrown around so many yards, so many stats. Uh, and I, I kind of knew too against the SELA game that you know, this is gonna be one of the hardest opponents we played. Yep. Now we gotta come roll down to the playoffs. And little did we know that in the playoffs, we were gonna have probably the hardest run and teams, all the big teams in FCS. Uh, you got Monmouth, you had North Dakota State, then you have James Madison. So talking about the playoffs, because it seemed like every game came down to one thing. In, yeah. in Monmouth, it was a game-winning interception uh, against North Dakota State. We, our special teams kind of, we, we had some problems with special teams and able to get them close enough in the game. Then James Madison, of course, we're down by at least 20 at halftime. So talking about the playoffs and uh, how it went for you and just the, the, the pressure and the feelings just because of how close we made it the whole way. Well, you know, I'm back east and we've won the national championship and someone says something about an asterisk. There should be an asterisk. I said, yeah, damn right there should be an asterisk. It was the toughest thing any team has ever had to do in the history of college football, playing through a pandemic, having the best three teams in the country on three straight weekends. I mean, no one's ever had to do that before. And, uh, you know, we, with that Mammoth game, you know, obviously they were a top 10 team. They weren't, you know, one of the top three, but they were the top, the top 10 team. And we had to make a play at the end of the game to win that game. And then the North Dakota State game, everyone you know, has such respect for North Dakota State, nine national championships. And, um, you know, we make enough plays offensively uh, and then get to stop defensively to win that game, even though the special teams almost gave it up. And then we're down 21. And I remember doing the interview at halftime, down 21. And I said, we're going to be fine. And uh, my wife wasn't in town. She was out in L.A. with my son. She was in his closet doing, redoing the closet because she didn't want to watch the game. My son's <laughs> like, He's, they're down 21, Mom. And, um, and she said to me, she goes, I saw the halftime interview and, like, you like all the confidence in the world. I said, yeah. I just had to convince our guys if we just get seven, we're going to be okay. And once we got seven, all of a sudden it just rolled and we scored 28 points in five and a half minutes and one of the most historic uh, comebacks in the history of college football. And then... Uh, and then it was on to uh, the national championship. Yeah, you so know? talking about the national championship, uh, you've been there before. You, you've won a national championship, but this was your first time, well, not your first time with Sam Houston, but a new team in Sam Houston. So talking about the national championship game, kind of walking in the Frisco, it was such a cool experience for all the players. Um, but the game, it was raining. 
it was uh, it was crazy. We kind of had to change everything. And then our, the starting quarterback for South Dakota State uh, tears his ACL in one of the first plays of the game. And I know you talked about in the post game interview how you had to change everything because you had the game plan for him, yep. and all of a sudden you have a backup quarterback that you haven't really seen a lot. Talk to me about the national championship game and uh, everything that went with it. Yeah, my 11th national championship game, two as a player, nine as a coach, and they're hard. They're hard to win, and but you just cherish every moment. I remember the talk I gave Saturday night before the Sunday game about immortality and the fact that when I was speaking at Michigan at a clinic, I went into the big house and saw in 1901, 1902, 1903, and 1904, Michigan had won the national championship. But it wasn't amazing that they won four straight. What was amazing, 110 or 120 years later, they're celebrating those national championships. And that's when we co coined the, the phrase immortality. And so I thought we were very well in a great mindset to go out and play that game. And I think our belief system, the fact that we just had three wins in a row basically coming down to the last drive of each of those games, I thought our guys felt like they could not lose. And then when the rain delays came, those lightning delays came, I thought it just kind of put it over the top. And I can remember re looking around the corner when you guys were dancing, and I was smart enough to know that, you know what? Let them go. I mean, let them go. I mean, they have such enthusiasm. They have such belief in each other. Just let them go. And uh, it was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, going to win a national championship and celebrating that with your, your brothers and your teammates, I mean, it bonds you for life, forever. And I've been blessed. I, you know, I have a national championship team I, I, I played on. I have a national championship team back in Delaware I coached. Now I have this one. And I know this. All those teams are just so tight. And all those teams, I'll get text messages, hey, it's our 15th anniversary winning the national championship. And all of a sudden, all these text messages will come in from my Delaware guys or the guys I played with. In 1979, we won the national championship. I still hear from them if it's an anniversary. So it's something that it bonds you together forever. And as a coach, it's such, such a cool experience being with your team as they march through and win a national championship. Yeah, you talked about immortality. Another cool thing is in the bottom of our ring right here, and so we'll remember it forever. And then the final question to kind of touch about the next season in the fall. So we won the national championship, and, and we come in as the number one team. Now we have a field house. We have a brand new locker room. COVID not really exists anymore. We still have to take tests, but it's not really there. So we have to stay the number one team. And I feel like the thing was, is we don't really have that edge. We didn't have that edge because we weren't the underdogs anymore. Mm -hmm. We were the top team. So what did you tell the players and tell all of us about staying kind of the underdog, staying gritty, and then at the end of the day, going on and winning 21 games in a year, how crazy that was and something that may never happen again. Well, we put it right out there that, you know, we were going to try winning 24 games in a row. We were going to try winning two national championships. We're going to try winning three conference championships all in a 10-month period. I mean, what we were trying to do was, it was immortality again. And so we talked about how hard this was going to be and the fact that we were going to have to stay focused and we're going to have to, every day was just going to be like another work day. And I, I tell you, I don't know if I've ever been around a team that has practiced that long with that intensity. And at the very end, you could just see our bodies and our minds were starting to wear out a little bit. And there's a reason why you probably don't tw play 22 games in 10 months. And there's also, not only did you play 22 games, you also had two training camps. So it was two training camps, 22 games, and I could just see physically and, and mentally just start to wear down a little bit towards the end. And uh, did it surprise me? A little bit because I thought we were immortal. <laughs> but at, when you take a step back and you look at it, and now I look what's going on during our spring practice and the number of injuries that we've had without tackling to the ground, you do realize our bodies were really beaten up. And so uh, I thought we did everything we could do after the national championship. We gave them a month and a half off and said, hey, guys, we'll see you in a month and a half. Come back then, and we're going to you know, get back after this thing. But I just think that 22 games over a 10-month period really took its toll. And, uh, again, I thought it was a great run and one of the most historic runs in the history of college football. But maybe 20, 24 in a row was maybe just a little bit too much in a 10-month period. Well, uh, you know, crazy two years, and it's such a fun experience for me being a player, getting to do all that. And, and of course, we still have so much more to do. I, I wish we had more time to talk about it because we have the big A&M game. We have Piney Woods, but uh, maybe another time. Absolutely. Uh, this was Huntsville Huddle. It was a pleasure being your host with uh, Coach Keeler. And, of course, we will see you next time.